Now we have a lot of mess up here for you to, you know, to, to hunt through, but you just have to make a choice when you're doing this. If you want to make keep everything as mixed numbers, then up here when you when you ran across this 36 25th, you change that to a mixed number. Then when you add, you add your whole numbers and your fractions separately. When you get ready to subtract, you subtract your fractions and your whole numbers separately and get your answer. If you don't like that, then your other choice is to make everything improper. So you start with this 8 and make it 8 over 1 plus 36 25ths. Get common denominators so you can add those. And then make your 5, 5 over 1. And again, get common denominators to add them. Or in this case, to subtract them. And then get your improper fraction here. And that could be left that way. Or you could make it the 4 and 11 25. So you just have to make a choice of whether you like adding and subtracting as mixed numbers or whether you want to make everything in proper fractions. Both ways work fine as long as you're careful. Now we're going to try one that has some parentheses in it. 8 and 4 fifths plus the expression 6 minus 4 cubed times a 4. So as our rule tell us, we'll begin inside of our parentheses. So we'll copy everything else down just as it is. 8 and 4 fifths plus, put our parentheses, put our cubed times the 1 4. And what we're going to do is do what's in the parentheses. Well, we can certainly do 6 minus 4 and just put our answer as 2. So now we've done our parentheses and we're ready next to follow our second rule which says to do exponents. So we're going to write everything else down the same, 8 and 4 fifths plus, and now we've got to raise 2 to the third power. Well, 2 to the third power means we're going to take 3 2's and multiply them together. When we do that, we get 4 times 2, which is 8. So that answer will be 8. Let's just kind of do this to keep it separate from our problem. So we're going to fill in an 8 here. That was our 2 cubed. And now we still have times the 1 4. So now we're ready to look at what's left. We have adding and multiplying. And multiplying comes next. So now we need to do this 8 times the 1 4. And if I wanted to come over to the side to do it, I could do it right here, come over to the side. If I came over to the side, I'd have 8 over 1 times 1 4. So I would reduce 4 into 4 1 time, 4 into 8 2 times. So I'd get 2 over 1, which would give me 2. So my 8 times my 1 fourth would be 2. Now you certainly could do that 8 times 1 fourth right there instead of coming over to the side. So I'm going to write the rest of my problem down. I have 8 and 4 fifths plus 2. And this is another case where I can just add it the way it is and get 10 and 4 fifths. Or if you don't like doing that, make the 8 and 4 fifths 44 fifths. Make the 2 2 over 1, put them under each other, get a common denominator, and add them. So you can make them everything improper before you add, or you can do what I did here with the mixed numbers, and add the whole numbers and add the fractions. There was no fraction to add to 4 fifths, so we just got 10 and 4 fifths. Let's do one more. This one is 2 thirds plus 1 half times the expression 4 and 3 fourths plus 1 and a half. Okay, in this one, again you start inside your parentheses, so I'd write it down 2 thirds plus a half, and then I'd be ready to work inside my parentheses. Now, since I kept things as mixed numbers in the last problem, this time I think I'll do them as improper fractions. 
so we can just see it done the other way. So I'm going to say 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 gives me 19 fourths, plus 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 gives me 3 halves. So I have 19 fourths plus 3 halves to add, and I'd have to get a common denominator to do that. So let's come over to the side. I'm going to take my 19 fourths and my 3 halves. I want to add them. And I have to find my common denominator. In this case, my biggest denominator, 4, will work because 2 will go into it. So I'm use 4 and just copy the 19 up here because I already have 19 fours. Put my 4 over here. I'm going to multiply by 2. So I'll get 6 fours. And remember I'm adding. So I have 25 fours. 25 fours. Now, since this time in the problem I'm going to leave everything improper, I go ahead and take that 25 fours and put it back in my problem. Now the only thing I'd want to make sure is there was no common factor in 25 and 4. If I'd come up with 26 fours, I would have wanted to have divided them both by 2 before I started. But since I had 25 fours, that's all I can do with it. Now, if you had done the problem by adding the 4 and 1 and getting the 5 and then adding the 3 fours and the 1 half, you know, getting a common denominator and adding those, you would have ended up with a mixed number. Actually, the mixed number you would have gotten would have been 6 and a fourth. But then you'd have to turn it back into an improper fraction before you got ready to do the next step. Because in our next step, we've got to multiply. So in other words, it, we, this means multiplying, so it's really 2 thirds plus 1 half times the 25 fourths. So we've got to do multiplying next. So here we are. We're going to do this step. And when I just look at that, I can tell that nothing can be reduced. So since it can't be reduced, I'm just going to go ahead and do it right there. Two-thirds plus. I multiply numerator by numerator. That's 1 times 25. I get 25. And 2 times 4 gives me 8. So I end up with 25 8 when I do that. And now I'm down to my last step, which is adding. And I can't add unless I have a common denominator. So we need to come to the side again. We have 2 thirds. And we have 25 eighths. This time when we get ready to add, we can't use 8 because 3 won't go into 8. So we start taking multiples of 8. We try 8 times 2, which is 16, and see if 3 will go into 16, and it won't. So then we try 8 times 3, which is 24, and 3 will go into that. So our common denominator is 24. We have to multiply by 8 and by 8, so we get 16 24. And here we have to multiply by 3 and by 3, and we get 75 24. So we've got to take, I'm just going to write this up here so we can see it. We've got to take our 16 24 and add it to 75 24. When we do that, we have 11, carry our 1, 91. So we end up with 91 24. And since there's no common divisor in 91 and 24, we could leave it like that, or we could divide it out. Let's see how many times 24 will go into 91. Probably 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. 6 plus the one that we carry is 7. When we subtract, we have 2 from 11. We'll leave 9. 7 from 8. We'll leave 1. So we have 3 and 19 24. So you could either leave that 91 24 or 3 and 19 24.